The Great Resignation is revealing a lot about how American workers feel today, maybe including you. One revelation, many women are done being overworked and underpaid. Now some researchers are giving that trend a different name, the Great Breakup. A new study from LeanIn.org and McKinsey explores what working women say they want in terms of opportunity, flexibility, and diversity. And those workers are clearly not shy about quitting their jobs to find it. The study shows a stubborn lack of equal advancement in corporate America. For every 100 men promoted from entry level to managerial jobs, only 87 women are promoted. Right now, roughly 60% of managers are men and 40% are women. So for every two women in management, there are approximately three men. Some companies are losing women in leadership at alarming rates. According to the report, for every one woman director who gets promoted, two leave their company. Joining us now is Daniela Pierre Bravo, reporter for Morning Joe on MSNBC. Her latest book is called The Other, How to Own Your Power at Work as a Woman of Color. Daniela, what exactly is this great breakup? There have been songs forever talking about leaving your job. There was a song in the 70s called Take This Job and Shove It. <laughs> so when we say the great breakup, what do we mean? Yeah, I mean, it started with the great resignation and Lean In and McKinsey came out with this report of which I wrote for Mika Know Your Value page. The great breakup is basically women, women in leadership roles that are asking for more and when they're not getting it, they're breaking up with their companies. They're not leaving the workplace altogether, but they're going elsewhere to find it. Breakup sounds a little different than just resignation. Right. You know, you can be resigned in a bad relationship. When you break up, you've kind of made a personal lifestyle choice about what you will and won't put up with. That feels like a much bigger decision set. Well, it's because the values don't align. They're going into these places, these these corporations, these companies where they're being asked to do more and they're not being compensated. One of the things that really struck me about this report, which is the same research that I found when I wrote my book and in the research that I do for Know Your Value, is that women by and large, for example, are being asked to do more DEI work than men. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. And inclusion, and they're not being compensated for it. 40% of the women that were um, researched or that were surveyed for this report said that there's no sort of method or metric that goes into how much they're putting into DEI work in their actual performance review. So they're just sick of doing work that is not being compensated. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Because I think a lot of us came up feeling like we want to be go-getters, you want to do a little extra, arrive early, stay late, do whatever you're asked to do. Yeah. So that you can show that you're the kind of person that a company wants to promote. And I feel like that's still good guidance generally, but there's a line and we're kind of butting up to where that line is now, right? Right, and I actually wrote about that in, in my book, The Other, where the same rules that gave us success at the beginning of our workplace, you know, put your head down, do the work, be overly grateful. Um, it might work in year one or two, but as you go up the ladder, those same rules don't apply uh, towards going further up. Um, but the thing here I think that is really important to know is with women in leadership, they're seeing the numbers and representation, they're more dire than ever. And that's why women are leaving their companies in larger numbers than uh, men in leadership roles. Yeah, I mean, looking at the, the study, one in four C-suite leaders, CEOs, COOs, CFOs, and so on, is a woman, identifies yeah. as a woman. One in 20 C-suite leaders is a woman of color. So twenty. One in 20. So the stats are not very distributed compared to the population at the very least. So I'm, I'm guessing, I wonder, if these women in the workforce who are having this great breakup are finding something better to attach to, or are many of these women still kind of searching for what they need? Yeah, I think context matters here. I mean, I think that um, by and large, women are unsatisfied with the, the sort of the current corporate America model. And, you know, we saw that a lot of women are going out and starting their own thing. Um, I think about Latinas, right? Latinas lag and have always lagged the farthest on equal pay. 
This year it's gotten even worse, 49 cents to a dollar of a white man. And you see that Latinas are also part of the, the cohort that is the biggest expanding entrepreneurs in this country. There's about 2 million Latin entrepreneurs in this country. And so we're seeing that if they're not getting uh, their value back from their companies, they're either breaking up with them, going elsewhere, or starting something on their own. Can we just underscore the stat you just mentioned? So Latina women in the U.S., by and large, are literally making half of what white men make for the same work. 49 cents to a white man, non-Hispanic dollar, or a, a white man, uh, non-Hispanic. Um, I just have to say that when I wrote this book, which I, I wrote it about a year ago, it's outdated. Uh, when I wrote the book, Latinas made 53 cents for every white man's dollar. And this year it's 49 cents, as you mentioned. Our equal pay day is December 8th. So we went from being in October to going to December 8th. It takes us almost a year to make what a white man makes. Um, so you can see that it's not just the inequities, the microaggressions, the, the slights that happen at work, but it's the real money that is being lost at the table when these women stay at these companies that are just not given the value back. So what do we do about this? I mean, I feel like a lot of the things that were listed in this report are things that everybody would want at work, you know, having an inclusive environment, a place that focuses on building an inclusive culture, giving people the opportunity to make mistakes and learn and reconcile and try try again and chances for advancement. Yeah. Separate the things that I think every business needs to do as we try to sort of unsuck the workplace of 2022 right. with the things that are more specific to women in the workplace. Well, one of these things that, one of the things that this report points out is the role of managers. It's hard being a manager right now because of everything that's going on with remote work. But a lot of these women that were surveyed in this report actually say how dissatisfied they are with the metrics that their managers use and the lack of support from their manager. So I think we start there. And one of the things that I thought was really interesting that this report actually gives as advice is to incentivize managers on how they manage, which I think is a great uh, place to start. Are there certain aspects? I, I feel like the, the biggest failure of management at just about every company is listening. You know, if you have a, if you try to talk to people, you know, who, you know, talk to women in your company and say, what do you need? What's going on? And you listen, but you don't believe them. You don't act on what you heard. You don't follow up. You don't validate. Well, then it was just, it was performance art. Like why, why even ask if you're not actually going to believe women who come to you and say, hey, there's a need that needs to be met. Yeah, and the reality is that most people who are managers in this country aren't actually trained to be managers. The other thing that you bring up is a really good point is the listening part. And I think for women of color, it's even more important um, because you get into these places where, for example, these nuances of discrediting happen every day in very slight ways. So when you're raising your hand and you, you give an idea and, and somebody takes credit for it, a manager should probably, you know, step in and regurgitate what you just said, right? Or the microaggressions that happens and the role that the manager has in, in working towards kind of dismantling that bias that's happening. So we can talk about this forever, I feel, and you know, I wrote a whole book about this, but it happens in such nuanced, nuanced ways, but management has a lot to do here with uh, solving the problem. I think that one that you just mentioned at the end in terms of affirming and validating the ideas of the women on your team, just repeating them so that the, the person who said it knows that you heard them, I think that's a good place mm -hmm. to start. Daniela Pierre Bravo, appreciate you talking this through with us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.